I would beat the fuck out of you in the street. No, I would, I would kill you. You real, think real. at your way. What's your... 150, around 150. Bro, I would maul you at 150. No. 100%. No. You cannot take a punch, though. So, like, you're not used to getting hit. I've been hit, though. No, no, no. But not you've been hit by regular guys, like guys who don't even know how to punch. I know everybody thinks, like, oh, well, he's going to... If you grab me. Yeah. But you have to get to the point where you have to grab me. So, in the process of you getting to me... You think you piece me up that fast? I didn't fuck big dudes before yeah i'm telling you once you see how they react once they're hit, once they're hit it's the simple weight thing that fucks me up it's the, the weight. weight this is a perfect example actually a great time to talk about size and fights and one doesn't matter it's like the biggest misconception like people have the hardest time grasping how much does size actually matter in a fight whether it be in competition or not so there's like three paths you can go down to become a better fighter. There's being bigger. So size is one path. Skill is another path, developing your techniques and stuff like that. And then number three is your athletic ability. Now, athletic ability can only go so far. Most of it is natural rather than you actually building upon it. But of course, you still can with various different kind of workout techniques that makes you faster, jump higher, jump farther, all that stuff. But most of it is actually natural. The two main pathways are size and skill the bigger you get the more capable you are as a fighter but also the more skilled you are the better you become as a fighter as well so people don't know how to differentiate which one is better what path do you go down to become a better fighter the path of size is more of a primitive mindset this has been something that's been talked about for millenniums the bigger man is always the more capable man when it comes to a fight back in the caveman days the biggest guy in the tribe was the best fighter that's how everybody saw it and throughout the thousands of years this is how it's always been looked at up until more recently in the last like 100 to 200 years or so fighting skill has progressed to a point where it's become a lot more mainstream. Not only soldiers, back in the day, it was like just like the Greek warriors, etc., that were practicing different kind of martial arts. Now it's more of a widespread mainstream thing where everybody's doing it. The common folk is doing it, just like the soldiers are doing it. And now people are understanding it more than ever before. Skill is a longer path than size because everybody can only get so big, but skill can never end. You can always progress, always get better, always advance. And that's why eventually skill will trump size for the majority of the population. Now, there are a few minor examples, outliers like Hafthor Bjornsson or other guys like that who are just the biggest and strongest men in the world. You're gonna need an extraordinary amount of skill in order to defeat those guys, as well as you might also need some size in order to not get injured in those kind of clashes, but even without the size, you can still beat them. Now, with this example, if you don't know who these two are, there's Bradley Martin, who is a YouTuber. He lifts a lot of weight. That's the main thing that he does. He owns like gyms and stuff like that. Very big, very strong guy he weighs like 250 pounds and he's like six foot three six foot two very big guy right he lifts a crazy amount of weight and then there's Devin Haney who's a longtime professional boxer one of the best boxers in the world who's five foot nine and walks around at 150 pounds well they got in a bit of an argument where they both said that they would beat each other in a fight not in competition but a real fight Devin Haney was saying that I'm just too skilled, I'm too fast, I will touch you before you can do anything, and it'll take just a couple shots for you not to be the same guy. You're not going to want to take the punches anymore because you're untrained. You don't know how to take punches, you're too easy to hit, and it doesn't matter how big you are, you're not going to take my shots. I might not knock you out, but you definitely don't want to be in the fight anymore after I touch you. But then Bradley Martin is saying, the weight is too much, I'm too strong and too big for you, if I grab you, you're done, I'm mauling you. Both these guys are actually correct in what they're saying here. Now, I'm not going to say they're correct in who would win the fight because it's by chances. There's never a definitive who wins. That's never been the thing. It's always by chance. Who has a better chance to win? Is Bradley Martin winning 7 out of 10 times? 8 out of 10 times? 4 out of 10 times? That's how you have to look at it. What they're both right in is Devin Haney would absolutely land meaningful big punches on Bradley Martin's chin before Bradley Martin gets anything off, before he meets his goal. Bradley Martin, on the other hand, though, is correct in him saying that if he grabs Devin Haney and gets him on the ground, he's going to maul him. But why? That's the question you have to ask. Why would Devin Haney be able to touch Bradley Martin and hurt him before Bradley Martin's able to do anything? And why would Bradley Martin, if he gets the fight down on the ground, maul him? Well, the reason why Devin Haney would be able to touch him, of course, and hurt him and probably beat him that way is because 
Bradley Martin is untrained. It's exactly like Devin Haney was saying. He doesn't know how to defend a punch. He doesn't know how to block a punch. He doesn't know how to see a proper punch. He's gotten into some fights with some randoms on the street that don't know how to throw. And of course, those are much easier to deal with. But when you're facing punches from the rare small percentage of world-class punchers, this is something most people never experience in their lives. Devin Haney has been training his punches to become the fastest they've become with the perfect technique, mastering his craft, ever since he was a little child. The speed of the punches and the surprising technique of him able to get from point A to point B with his fist on Bradley Martin's chin would be completely unseeable for Bradley Martin. He wouldn't know what to look for. He would have to completely rely on primitive instincts because he doesn't have training. Turning his head away, looking away, pushing off, extending his arms, everything that you don't want to do when you're facing someone throwing punches at your head at maximum velocity with the perfect form. And he has the kind of speed at his smaller size to be able to land multiple punches on Bradley Martin, even if Martin's coming at him square to the chin and even in the same spot. This is actually something a lot of people don't see that. These professional boxers are able to pinpoint their punches on the same spot every single time, especially against someone who's not trained. Because nothing's going to be so surprising or difficult about their defense. The worst kind of shots to take are number one, punches you don't see coming, which is absolutely going to happen multiple times in that fight. And number two, getting hit in the same spot over and over again. These are the kind of punches from Devin Haney that would be able to knock a big guy like Bradley Martin to the ground very quickly. Even though Bradley Martin's a big guy, he will be able to take a few more shots than your normal average 170 to 200 pound man. But the head and the brain is not meant to take impact. The only thing that protects your brain are the meninges around it. And this is not enough, especially from an untrained person to be able to defend himself and not get knocked out. The brain only needs a certain amount of impact in order for it to shut down. And it does not matter how big you are at all. Because the way that your head and your chin and your neck are shaped. The anatomy of this whole upper side of your body from the head to the neck is designed not to take a punch. So because your actual anatomy being designed to not take punches to the head. So what boxers have done is use technique in order to patch up this human weakness as much as possible. Simply adding muscles to your traps isn't going to help you take a punch that much. Your chin and jaw act like a lever. If Devin Haney, even 150 pounds, cracks Bradley Martin to the jaw with a perfect hook, that one punch could absolutely be enough to knock Bradley Martin clean out. Now, why don't you see this in the highest level of competition? Why don't you see him boxing in MMA? Why don't you see it so often with the best fighters in the world? Well, it's because they are the best fighters in the world. These are not untrained people. Untrained people don't know how to defend a punch. Bradley Martin would not know how to defend a punch other than his natural instincts that everybody has. Look away and stuff like that, which in fact actually makes you get hurt by punches even more. So the instincts that Bradley Martin actually will show would get him into even more trouble with trying to stop these punches from hitting him. But actual professional fighters are the cream of the crop when it comes to combat. There is no one on the planet that's even comparable to them. They have trained to defend, roll, evade, and even take the punch as minimal as possible, soften it as much as possible for their entire lives. Most of the punches these guys get hit by are not clean shots, and they have a good eye in order to see the punch coming. They have a different kind of instinct built into them over time where they don't look away from a punch. A lot of times you see these randoms get knocked out by one punch at like a bar or something like that is because they look away from the punch. They don't know how to keep their eyes and see the shots coming. That's the biggest issue there. Boxers, they hardly ever look away from a punch. They see it coming. When you see a punch coming, the, the impact from it is so much less. I think people don't actually understand how much better you take a punch when you actually see it coming. It's such a significant difference. So that is why Devin Haney not only can hurt Bradley Martin when Bradley's trying to come at him, but he probably would do it too. It's more of a chance, I would say, that Devin Haney lands some big, meaningful punches on Bradley Martin and hurts him before Bradley Martin's able to grab a hold of Devin Haney because people have to also understand punches is not everything about boxing. It's footwork too. Footwork is actually just as important as punching. And in fact, if you've ever trained before, what's the first thing they teach you? They don't teach you how to throw a punch first. They teach you how to move your feet first. It's the basis of boxing. It's the basis of combat, knowing where your feet are because you generate maximum power with correct foot placement and dictate distance. If you could dictate distance, you're able to keep your opponent at where you want them in order to keep landing your punches on them. They teach you how to move forward and back, forward and back before they teach you how to throw a punch. A lot of people who haven't trained think a jab is the first thing taught in boxing. That is not true at all. It's moving your feet first. And the fact that so many people do think throwing the jab is the first thing taught in boxing 
shows how unaware so many are of the importance of footwork. And there are some people who will train how to move their feet correctly for months before actually learning how to do everything else. The untrained person, just like Bradley Martin, would not know how to move his feet in a way to catch Devin Haney. He would not know how to follow the patterns. He wouldn't know how to cut him off. He wouldn't know how to box him against a wall or something. He wouldn't know how to do it. He would have to rely on his instincts, which is something that happens naturally. Your adrenaline starts pumping. All of that is very natural in a fight. And for someone like Bradley Martin, he would 100% just follow Devin Haney around. He wouldn't know how to cut him off. He wouldn't know how to box him in. He wouldn't know how to follow the patterns. He wouldn't know how to intercept them in certain movements or stuff like that. That's what you see from the highest level fighters. You don't see that from untrained people. Even athletic people, you will not see that out of them because they don't understand it. And that is one thing I have noticed in a lot of people who try to differentiate trained and untrained. A lot of people actually can't even grasp the difference. They know that one guy's a more skilled fighter, but they actually can't grasp the skill. People have become so used to watching world-class fighters clash with each other every single week that they forget how bad the untrained person is. It's like normalizing that skill level. It's actually very interesting when you think about it because you would think it would be the other way around. But a lot of people think, oh, size is enough, right? Weight class is for a reason. That's why I hear often, yeah, there's weight classes only because these guys are evenly trained. There's also amateur and pro levels to save the newbie from getting slaughtered out there. Weight classes are created because everybody's trained. That's why it was created. I would say even more important is the fact that they have amateur and pro levels. That's to protect the guy that's new coming in. So a new guy doesn't come in and fight Francis Ngannou. Or a new guy comes in and doesn't fight Islam Akashev or something. I would say that's way more of a vast difference than weight classes. And this whole thing with not grasping skill gaps was clearly evident when a lot of people thought that LeBron James could beat up Colby Covington. It was so coincidental. Then that whole video came out of that amateur fighter who beat up the much bigger football player in the bathroom. Amateur MMA fighter. Amateur. The lowest of the competitive scene. Beat up a guy who's double his size in the bathroom. A football player, an athlete who's been doing it for a long time. He was a professional NFL football player. And not only that, we've seen so many different examples of this kind of thing happening with professional fighters like Roger Huerta knocking out that football player with one punch. And like we've seen this stuff happen so many times. I mean, the dentist destroyed that guy that challenged him in the gym. We've seen this so many times. The skill gap between an untrained person like Bradley Martin and a professional longtime martial artist like Devin Haney is so vast. It's so hard to even comprehend it. It's like imagining a 2,000 foot building. You can't even imagine. You can't even comprehend how big it is. That's how it is with Devin Haney and Bradley Martin when it comes to skill difference. But now, Bradley Martin, if he does get a hold of Devin Haney and takes him to the ground, he absolutely does maul him. That is true. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, Bradley Martin gets to use what he does best, what he's been training his body for pretty much his whole life. He gets to use his physical strength on you. When you're at striking distance, you're not able to actually use your strength. It's a lot more about speed, a lot more about power and flexibility. When it comes to grappling, then you're able to actually use your strength, your grip strength, pulling, turning, pushing, all that stuff now becomes part of Bradley Martin's skill set, something he's been doing his whole life. And more importantly, why he would have more success there is because that's where the skills are even playing field. Neither guy knows how to really grapple like that. So what is the difference maker? Bradley Martin's strength and size. Devin Haney's not a grappler at all. He may have a good understanding of combat, which is going to put his mindset at a better place than Bradley Martin's. Even when it comes to grappling, he would have like better instincts with that stuff, but that's not nearly enough to contest with Bradley Martin's strength and size. So it all comes down to, could Bradley Martin get in distance before getting knocked out or even hurt, grab Haney and take him to the ground? Or would Haney's skill on the feet be too much and not allow Bradley Martin to even get in the necessary distance in order to take him to the ground. If I were to predict that, I would say that Devin Haney absolutely has a bigger chance of winning there. I would say he has like a 7 out of 10 chance, maybe 8 out of 10. There is absolutely some chance for Bradley Martin to beat him. And maybe some would say I'm too generous on Bradley Martin's uh, chances there. But the environment and everything involved is absolutely going to impact on how that fight would go down. Now, if it's like a closer space, there's walls and stuff like that, Devin Haney would have more of a problem. But if it's like open space, no walls, it would become so much easier for Devin Haney to beat him. It is actually, in my opinion, like one of the most interesting discussions to have because it's something people have been arguing for a very long time. 
fighters, most fighters, there are some that will disagree and say that size will make the difference. I think Michael Bisping was one of them. But most fighters, from Brian Ortega to Conor McGregor to Devin Haney to Floyd Mayweather to pretty much every Brazilian jiu-jitsu artist, they all say that the skill is the biggest thing. Skill is what makes the fight. There are some outliers like Hafthor Bjornsson or those strong men. I mean, they're literally the strongest men in the world. The only people that are going to contest with that or beat them are the most skilled fighters in the world. But just a big, strong, athletic guy like Bradley Martin is different, right? That's not the same kind of thing. 